Hey guys, so this tutorial is all about metal, specifically shiny gray, silver, aluminum, tin sort of uh, metal. <laughs> the shiny stuff, not the dull, boring stuff, am I right? <laughs> I'm going to be using Photoshop, but any sort of digital program should be just fine. But for those of you who are, are using Photoshop, I'll go ahead and show you my brush settings. I picked the basic round brush, just the ones from up here and did the uh, tapering lines and added transfer which makes it this little thing all nice and dendy and i also use the smudge tool but i use very specific settings for it you're welcome to check out my tutorial in the description i'm just going to be showing you guys how to draw these three balls but also talk about metal and kind of how it works and let's get started so for those of you who've watched my fundamental series tutorials, specifically value, form, and texture, you're going to be a little bit familiar with this and it's going to be a little bit easier for you. And if you haven't seen those videos, I'll link them in the description. I definitely recommend them. But anyway, so metal is a lot to do with texture and value and form. So all the things I mentioned, um, it's important to note the type of metal that you want to draw to because there's lots of different kinds of metals and they all have different textures and even like the same metal type like there's different types of those like you, there's super shiny silver and then there's also super dull silver so it also depends on what you're going for and it's all about basically the very like minuscule texture like microscopic wise on the object itself so something that's more smooth and it doesn't have to be round or straight or anything. It just has to be more, um, like microscopically speaking, very uh, flat and smooth. There's not a lot of rough spots. There's not a lot of concaves or convexes, bumps basically. Um, and that allows the light to spread more evenly over it. So if you have something like a sphere, you can have the light travel very easily around the curve of the sphere. And that's kind of what I'm doing with these. And if something has more of a rougher texture to it, it's going to appear more matte, which means it's gonna be less shiny, less glossy. And there are metals that are like that. And I'm not gonna be focusing on those, just something to keep in mind. Another thing to remember is that shiny metals are very, very, very high contrast. And that means that the lightest points are very bright and the darkest points are very dark and they're often right next to each other. Because metals, these ones that I'm drawing and just the ones I'm talking about in particular, are so high gloss and just very shiny, the uh, light that you see that comes off of them is like the texture and the pictures and just the, the visuals that you see that are reflected off of these things are not actually like a reflected light. Like if you know the basics of form, you have the sphere and you have the highlight, the midtone, blah, blah, blah. And you have that area where if something is on a surface, light will bounce off of that surface and back onto the object. And that's called reflected light. And while these things kind of have that, <laughs> it's more of a reflection, not reflected light. And what that means is it's basically like a mirror. So if you go and, you know, go in your bathroom and you look at yourself in the mirror, that's what's happening with the metal. It's basically taking what is surrounding it and reflecting it off of itself. So if you have something that's metal in your house, you can just walk around and hold it up to a bunch of different things and it will change. The appearance of it will change and it will never be the same um, in like different environments and it will reflect a bunch of different things and you can even go outside and you'll see it like reflect the sky. <laughs> the, um, the shinier, the more glossy, the more reflective, the more you're just going to basically have a mirror, like not a, a mirror mirror, but a metallic mirror, I guess. So the way the things are reflected depends greatly on the texture, which I've kind of already discussed, and the shape of the object. So I'm doing spheres, so things are going to be spherized, <laughs> to put it simply. Basically, things are going to be warped to be around the sphere. So if you have, say, a cloud or something and you have this metal sphere and you put that sphere outside and it reflects it's very high glossy it'll reflect the cloud and you'll see the cloud isn't 
you know, straight across like we normally see basically. <laughs> to, be, to be simplistic, straight across. Um, it will be curved around the sphere as the light is reflected around the sphere. And you don't have to go outside to do this. You don't need a sphere to do this. If you have a metal spoon, that's kind of a fun little project to do. You can basically do both sides of the spoon and just see the differences in the way it reflects and just how that kind of works. I definitely recommend collecting a bunch of random metal objects that you have and just going around doing different things with it. What I'm doing right now is showing how color is reflected because it's not always black and white. You're not going to have a perfect, you know, black and white scenario with this metal in the real world. So it's important to note that not only does it reflect a picture, it will reflect the colors as well. And those colors will also be just as warped as the picture. So I'm showing here as if the spheres were on a table of red, yellow, and blue and how they interact with each other. So I'm placing these kind of like if they were actually in a reality sort of thing and interacting with each other. So they're on this table. The first ball is going to have uh, the red, but it's also next to the yellow. So there's going to be a bit of yellow onto it. And then the middle ball is between both. So it's going to have the yellow, the red, and the blue. And the final ball is going to have just the yellow and the blue. Another thing that I'm doing is I'm also reflecting each ball off of itself and onto the other balls. So the middle ball is going to be reflecting both the balls on either side, and it's going to be a bit warped. It's not going to be a perfect circle. It's going to be, it's not even really going to be a sphere. It's going to be going around the curve of the sphere that it's reflecting on. And that's going to be for all of them. Another thing to quick mention is that you're going to see more clearly the appearance of what's called the Terminator, which I didn't discuss in my forum video just because there's a lot of things I didn't discuss in the fundamentals video, but this is um, also on to that whole like basic sphere thing. The Terminator is actually the darkest point that's very close to the edge of the core shadow. So it's going to be the closest to the lightest parts and that's going to be the darkest part. So you're more going to see that more clearly on something that's metal because it's so high contrast. If you're going to be doing studies yourself on just metal and you don't have access to resources, um, I would re definitely recommend the public domain because that's kind of where I get a lot of my references. Or if it's just, you know, for practice and educational purposes, Google Images, that's fair. <laughs> but you're going to want to look up uh, teapots, medieval armor, eating utensils like forks if you don't have anything readily available around the house. And just to show you some quick examples, if you see here in this picture, you'll notice that here, let me get a uh, noticeable brush. <laughs> All right, so if you see here, you have the cup, like basically perfectly reflected back onto this metal. It's, you know, it's, it's clean, it's shiny, it's very high glossy. The texture is very smooth and flat, so it gets a great reflection. And you can see the tea cup on multiple ones and pretty much everything is bouncing off each other. And that's basically what metal is. It's a mirror. You can even see some of the stuff up here, the rest of like the room. So it's important to keep in mind that it's not just reflected light. It's a reflection, like a mirror. And you can really get <laughs> the fun stuff like this picture. I picked this one very specifically. Um, you can see that uh, this has a lot of yellow to it. And so this light right here, that's getting hit from some light source over here and just, it's that and it's this surface is reflective. So you get even more of the whole going back and forth thing. So you have this, which reflects here, which then reflects back onto this, which is how you get this yellow right here. And it just, it keeps going back and forth and back and forth. And that's kind of what makes this a bit fun, but also a bit of a challenge. Just another example here, you can, if you look really closely into like this area right here, you can see the reflection of the road and streets and grass and trees and stuff behind that's like out of frame. So you can actually see stuff that's behind the camera that took the picture because of the whole reflection. It's distorted because of the shape of the metal and how it's curved and going kind of like that. So you're gonna have some distortion there. 
And then just here's some pictures that I took outside with some of the metal stuff that I own. <laughs> uh, just pay attention to this teapot because that's what I'm going to be talking about. I brought up a knife right here. This knife is also metal. I don't remember what kind. I think it's aluminum. Uh, that's not the important thing. The important thing is that they're both shiny and glossy. <laughs> so you can see that through these two pictures, sorry they're kind of slightly off, but this knife is reflecting right here. Now notice that it's not the shadow. If you pay attention over here, you'll actually see the shadow of my hand and the knife. So this is not a shadow. This is actually a reflection. And if I turn the knife sideways, well, first of all, you can kind of see what's going on right there, but you also notice that the sun catches, whoops, the sun catches the light onto, well, the backside. So it's more like, like it's kind of the backside of the knife that you can't see. And the light bounced off that hit here. And you have this nice line of reflection on the teapot. And I did the same thing with the spoon. And if you kind of look, you can see uh, my balcony and some trees around where I live in the sky right here. And here's the sun. And then here's a little bit of my camera. <laughs> and then same thing here. It uh, creates that line. And then over here you get that highlight. And it's not the shadow because right here is the shadow of the spoon. So it's not a shadow. You guys got to remember that. And you can also see me right here in the spoon. Another example of just reflection is right here you have these plants that are very green and the light is coming from them and hitting right here on the metal and it's pretty much gonna, you can kind of see like the blue sky a little bit right here and it's just, even though this metal is pretty dull and it's not like high gloss like the other examples I've been showing, there's a bit more of a rough texture to it which makes it more of that dull feeling, <laughs> the dullness of it, um, it's still going to have reflection to it. Like you can even see right here, like it's kind of everywhere. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful for you. If you end up making anything from this tutorial, feel free to link down below. I would really love to see. I'll also have a Copic Markers version of this tutorial and I'll link that in the description when I put that up. So yeah, thanks for watching. Bye!